Uh, Mr. Joyal. Senator Joyal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your explanation, Mr. Gunn. I cannot resist but ask you, of course, that uh, uh, I don't see uh, Quebec mentioned in mm. province or territory. Could you explain for sure why the province of Quebec is not included? In the so uh, Quebec is uh, – we have Quebec students um, uh, and schools participate with us in federal elections, and we work uh, in partnership with an organization that is fully funded in that province uh, that does parallel elections um, uh, by elections, uh, Quebec, and I believe their Department of Education. Um, uh, we're looking forward to improving our presence in Quebec. We've, uh, we're still learning how to work together, but they kind of piggyback on us within uh, federal elections. Uh, so they, um, we just if there was something that already existed and we have some best practices we feel we can share with them, we just feel it's better to work in cooperation. Mm -hmm. Is it a question of language or money or the fact that it comes from the federal government and they are reluctant to be involved in the federal materials and, you know, you understand what I trying to elude I, in this. I do. I actually think that that's something that it does exist. I think we can get through that. Um, I believe it really had to do with, uh, as an organization, attempting to get into schools, we walk a very fine line of persistence and, um, I don't know how you politely say pissing people off at the school that could potentially register. Um, and uh, they were, uh, they have traditionally been not as aggressive and there's been a leadership change in the organization. Mm -hmm. And now I believe we can bring our numbers up significantly in Quebec uh, by this new leadership that's very, very interested in working with us. Because my other question would be, would you be able to measure the impact that you had on the, uh, I should say, on the motivation for a new citizen, uh, I mean a new voter, because I see that it's from 10 to 18, so they have not yet voted. Mm -hmm. But once they are entitled to vote, have you been able to measure those students who have, been, who have gone through your program versus those who have not to see if there is an impact on the level of participation in the first election? We have not yet. That's the longitudinal study that we would like someone to uh, pay for, for us to uh, measure that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I, was, I thought Elections Canada might. I think at this point they're, uh, they've settled on the um, uh, characteristics that we do establish within participating students during the election, interest, mm -hmm. knowledge, sense of civic duty, cause dialogue between uh, participating students and their peers. Um, usually for us, the difference is, do we raise money to do our work or do we raise money to pay somebody else to study us? And at this time, we've decided to raise money to do our uh, work. And just one other thing about that is, I mean, let's look at the last BC election. Okay, it was fully funded by Elections BC. Uh, great program, our best one yet in the province. We got up to 44% of all schools. Uh, 101,000 kids in the jurisdiction participated. It's about one out of five, one out of six kids in their entire school system. That's fantastic, but I won't see the long-term changes that we want to see until I'm at, at reaching five out of six kids, right? But you don't get to five out of six kids until you reach one out of six kids. Mm -hmm. Most people don't even come close to reaching one out of six kids. They're reaching like one out of a thousand kids. So we're doing really well, but uh, it's not, I, when we started this, I thought I could do one election and we'd like, you know, inspire kids to be political citizens. And I realize now this is, I need a couple more decades or our organization needs a couple more decades to do the, the, what we want to do. But we, I, I think it's been a great start. We celebrated our 10 year anniversary this last fall. How you made sure that the uh, information uh, that would summarize, for instance, the various parties' stands on issues would be made, uh, I should say, not objective but comparable in terms of its uh, we don't We don't provide that. Um, and the reason we don't provide that is uh, how do we guarantee that we're providing nonpartisan information? It's not our duty. Part of what we're uh, trying to uh, teach the kids is that it's their responsibility to search out and, and harness that information. They can do so in a variety of ways. One of the best ways is when the actual candidates come into schools and do a candidate's form in front of the kids. Um, and you know that from the research you've probably read about this. But we don't provide, uh, against the wishes of teachers, summarized party platforms. What we mm -hmm. usually do is look to your local media. Mm -hmm. Look to your local newspaper. Look to your editorials. Or, or computer, in fact. Oh, whatever. Yeah, yeah, there's tons of things. But what we're about is the process. And then uh, for us, it's really a mix of knowledge and experience mm -hmm. that we want kids to get out of this. Knowledge being the when, where, how, other, other aspects. Just even knowing what's the name of your electoral district 
is a knowledge achievement, right? Um, and then experience uh, um, achievements for us are things like meeting a local candidate, consuming news, reading the newspaper to make your decision rather than just watching maybe the leaders debate or doing both, right? Those are experiences. Mm. We, both of those are kind of a, um, that's, and, that's and, what we and, do with And this finally, about the uh, annual funding, um, you, you get, if I understand well, your, your intervention, that you receive money from private sources, I mean, from outside government sources to maintain your level of activities? Well, actually, um, not so much because we're only just beginning to do that. Uh, we weren't always a charity. We became a charity by seeking a bigger mandate um, and merging with an existing um, uh, charity. You might have known Warren Goldring, uh, AGF management in the Goldring family. Um, so we merged with them to create civics because I wanted to do more than just student vote, uh, like we have with our recent budget consultation that involved Finance Minister Flaherty, like we're doing with Rep Day, uh, getting representatives into schools across the country. What would be your budget that you would be aiming at? So we're project to project. So basically, uh, we're almost like a social enterprise. We're very entrepreneurial. We have to earn our money, or we have so far to bring in uh, to, to stay afloat. Um, so we'll string projects together, uh, like the student budget consultation, like an election, like BC, like the past Nova Scotia election. Um, if we ignored the project expenses and just had to pay the team that we have right now, it's about half a million dollars a year, including rent, a little bit of travel, um, and then additional expenses on top for the programs. Sure. Roster of senators wish okay. to ask questions. Uh, Senator Sorry about that. Uh, you, uh, Chair uh, Senator Royal, uh, ask my question. That helps the cause, uh, <laughs> Senator Moore. Chair, and uh, thank you, Mr. Gunn, for being here. Um, Thanks. I looked at the uh, at the student results 2011. I don't see any uh, any writings from Nova Scotia. Did you? Are you active in Nova Scotia? Or? Yeah. So are you looking at which page are you looking at, sir? Well, it's not numbered. Yeah. It's it's, um, it's, the, it's behind. Oh, the right. So that page that is not all of our results. We in the last federal election we had 301 of 308 of Canada's electoral districts represented. Um, the reason I put in that page, that is just simply the first page of about 20 or 15 or something, where we are ranking the electoral districts with the highest level of participation in the country. So if you'd like to give Patrick Brown, uh, MP Patrick Brown from Barrie, uh, if you can, from that other place, a pat on his back, he had 6,553 students in his electoral district participate. That is absolutely fantastic. And then the list goes uh, uh, down from there. So this is just the, um, the yeah. first 30 or whatever the number is, first 20 of the uh, descending order of our electoral districts mm -hmm. by uh, seat. So yes, we have uh, all of the writings represented in Nova Scotia. And we just coordinated the student vote program in Nova Scotia for the provincial election. Uh, best election yet, uh, we had 230 schools registered, which is about half. Uh, 22,000 kids uh, took part in casting a ballot. Nova Scotia? Yeah. Yeah, October 8th, I think it was. Um, thank you. Um, on the uh, graph showing the growth in participation, the schools and the students, mm -hmm. um, how many schools did you say there are in the country? There's about, depending on how you count them, around like 14, 15,000. Um, mm -hmm. Some schools don't apply to us because they're uh, like primaries, like grades one to three. Um, so there's about 15,000 schools in the country. So are these schools all schools, public schools, private yeah. schools? Yeah. So would you do CJEPs? I can come back, or, or is that beyond the age? Uh, no, you can. Uh, I mean, they're a little bit more difficult to get into in our experience, but yes. Okay. Um, did you say you've been in existence for 10 years? Yes. So um, we've heard that uh, educating youth by way of you know, civics, uh, your organization, and civics ICS, uh, that it leads to greater participation in, in elections. So have you, as your organization, tracked the students that have voted in your student elections as compared with whether or not they voted in the next 
provincial or general election in the respective province? Um, in, like in response to Mr. Joyal's question, it, that's the longitudinal study that we would love to have someone uh, uh, take upon us. Okay. Right now we just have anecdotal evidence like from those emails that I read of the teachers, of teachers telling us that their 18-year-old students uh, uh, come back and tell them that they now participate in yeah. politics. That's, that's not much to stand on in front of a committee. But uh, no, we don't have what I'd like to have, which is the longitudinal study. Okay. All right. That's it, Chair. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.